Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Uh, this is my fourth or fifth introduction for this video. I have not been able to land this, so let me just, I'm going to peel back the curtain and let you on the inside of our journey here. Uh, I had a bad weekend for fantasy football. I'm hoping you had a great weekend for fantasy football. We're going to process all of our emotions here. We're going to go through the studs. We're going to go through the duds. I'm glad you're here with us. Please enjoy the show. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah! Welcome in. Monday, November 14th. Welcome one and all. Andy, Mike, and Jason, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Producers in the building today, the Borgogan, Papa Josh, Judge Giamatti. Uh, Papa Josh, far too cheery. Just in general? Yeah, but just in life. Yeah, not like this morning, just every morning. No, but on mornings like this, when you guys, you know, you guys are a little bit... Uh, a little sour? A little razzled by a by a rough weekend of fantasy football. And then here's Papa Josh bouncing off the walls as always in his late 40s. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not saying now I know exactly what it was like to be on the Titanic. Right. But I'm not not saying that. <laughs> good, good. At least we're not being hyperbolic this morning. We would never. No, you are essentially the victim of a large Look, you know the ship scene, sinking. You know the scene where it goes way up and the, the, the people are hitting the propellers? Oh, yeah, they're dropping. Way down. Boing. Yeah. Yeah, that's been us. there. Yeah. Bing. Been there. Metaphorically, I that's my fantasy season. Oh, good. So uh, we'll be reacting to all of that today. We've got studs <laughs> and duds. The weekly rewind. We do have injuries to talk about because fantasy yeah, football. There's a lot, of, a lot of people out there that have hit by the injuries. Also, uh, <laughs> Jeff Saturday, yeah, just, undefeated. Jeff Saturday gets the big win over the incredible Las Vegas Raiders, who have still retained their coach. They're very similar to a Titanic as well. Uh, but bonjour, because I am sure that we have picked up hundreds of thousands of listeners from Germany after. The sensational game over there. The crowd was incredible. So, bonjour. What's oh, up, everybody? Yeah, and welcome, bonjour. <laughs> Why does it seem like we're embittered by London games, but now huge fans of Munich games? Is it because the crowd Be was singing John Denver? Yeah, the people were incredible. Mm. And uh, not in London anymore? Or is it because we've know. been soured on all the London games being like well, the Jacksonville only? The, the, <laughs> yes, that doesn't help things. Uh, but also the difference being... Because of of daylight savings time, when everyone else switches their clocks, that's right. It moves the games to like an acceptable seven thirty or whatever it was. Yeah, so it was a fun game in Germany. It got a little got a little close at the end. Ridiculous Geno Smith throws, but uh, as always, we react to a weekend of fantasy <laughs> football mm. through puns. This is how we process the weekend, and uh, we put out the request for submissions. And you guys, well, you did what you always do. Yes. Well, let's begin here with uh, Wowvin Cook. How about Robert Tunyon? Cooper Hiccup. Uh, we're, wait, we're going after Cooper? No, it's, it's just a hiccup in his career. Okay. Greg Dolcich. Oh, we got another <laughs> yawner here. Bore Daryl Patterson. Oh, oh, but generic Henry. Oh, yeah. generic Henry. Uh... Christian, my dear Watson. What oh, a game. Just Winfields. <laughs> I'm in Roar. St. Brown. <laughs> that's so stupid. That was, that's the that's worst the one. one that crosses the that's, line that's for you? That's the one that broke it for me. Alvin Kamara. Saquon Sparkly. <laughs> Christian Smirk. Clyde Edwards Despair. And Squash Palmer. Who really My, let me down. Yeah. Mike couldn't handle Amon Roar St. Brown. <laughs> yeah. So you didn't have I to don't... actually roar. I think that was the problem. Yeah. You, you had... read it. Amon Roar. Mm, mm, I, I disagree. You got to sell that thing. Would you have preferred, um, 
what was it, Christian Watt father? Because I saw that too. That's kind of up your alley. Changing son to father. That's kind of the thing you do with oh. those. You know what I mean? Uh, no. Okay, good. I, I didn't no. put that one in there either. I don't do that one. Maybe you're just more embittered by your weekend. You couldn't embrace the Maybe. puns. Maybe everything's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Who's to say? Uh, well, I mean, look, uh, from what I understand, as the Titanic went down, nobody appreciated any puns at that time. Yeah, they probably did not. Into the news we go. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Well, the Rams wide receiver Cooper Cup. Mm. Exited yeah. with a right ankle injury. He will undergo an MRI today. Initial reports are that he avoided a fractured fibula. The concern now is a high ankle sprain which would sideline him for a while. He was in a ton of pain. Yeah, it didn't look good. Uh, There's a lot of speculation about the, the fibula. Uh, that it's great news that he didn't break his leg, but this you would expect him to miss maybe a month. And this is now a Rams team, having lost to the Cardinals, that is pretty much out of it, right? Lost this, season. I don't think that they're trying to rush Cooper Cup back to yeah. – uh, do anything good for the rest of their season. That's that's a good point. Like you could get him back for the playoffs, or I mean, we we still need more news. But just me speculating, I'd say there's there's a chance they just shut him down. There are implications. I mean, I've seen people speculate on OBJ. I think there's a zero percent chance he goes to Los Angeles. He wants to win. I agree. But Allen Robinson, Van Jefferson, and Tyler Higby, mm -hmm. uh, all going to see. A necessarily well, or a necessary increase in utilization. Yeah. Well, there were an average of 150 targets a game going to Cooper Cup, so those now will have to go somewhere else. I mean, the to me, I mean, we're we're not on the waiver day, of course, but low key Ben Skoranek, I think might be far more involved than people are expecting. Yeah, I think he's going to be more involved than Van Jefferson will be. Yeah, Van Jefferson didn't come into the game until Cooper Cup got hurt. Yeah, the Rams season is uh, it's going down. And if you had Cooper Cup, he was same a, Rams, same. It was uh, it, Cooper Cup was a you know he's a backbone player for your team. Yeah, Zach Ertz left knee injury, uh, multiple weeks. Team believes the ACL is intact. He will have an MRI as well, but uh, a major knee injury for Zach Ertz. Rondell Moore will be m even more secure. Yeah, Hopkins, of course. But I mean, you, you've lost Hollywood Brown. You've lost Zach Ertz now, and they had a ton of targets. But he, and Zach Ertz was man. He yeah, you're right, Kyle. He looked sad being carted off the field. Yeah, he he looked like he knew. But Rondale Moore is having a very low key breakout season. Yeah, I mean, we saw in the beginning of the year Greg Dulcich in uh, kind of that or Dorch uh, Dorch. Thank you, <laughs> Greg <laughs> Dorch. The Dorch. Dorchich. Dorchich. Um, having a lot of fantasy relevance to start the season kind of in that Rondale role and now he's taking it over that was the hope is now you're getting a more talented player I mean, getting that utilization there's not a big difference between I mean the targets for Rondale Mill 13 10 and 8 the last three weeks he's been a top 20 wide receiver in all of them that's 136 reception pace so or sorry he's, top 24 yeah he's 7 he's 21 good. and 17 yep uh, big plays, couple downfield from that quarterback, uh, Colt McCoy. <laughs> it was nice to see the Cardinals able to move the ball. Oh, did did you did it? Oh, did man. it climb into your mind at all that maybe Jason, the offense is all right and the execution is wrong? It climbed. Considering it, it climbed, it looked into, good. It climbed into my mind that maybe the execution is worse than given credit for, and all the credit goes to the coaching. I still think both are bad. Juju went down with a very scary concussion. Yeah. He's now in the protocol. So uh, probably going to miss some time. Leonard Fournette exited with a hip injury. The Buccaneers do go into the bye, though. So if you were looking to uh, get the kind of full workload to Rashad White next week, he's not playing. Yeah, it's uh, but really, really interesting because he did get the start in the game. Rashad White started the game. But then as the game went on, Leonard Fournette was out touching Rashad White uh, up into the third quarter. Then Fournette gets injury, and Rashad White takes over, has his breakout game. So you go into the bye week, and you're thinking, 
maybe this will be the time now where this really does become Rashad White's team. You know, he is a he'll be a top priority pickup. Um, Rashad, I hate White. it when you get injury. I mean, <laughs> on a weekend, like if you go out and play. Yeah. Uh, Leonard Fournette hip yeah, injury. We, Kurt, yeah. Khalil Herbert hip injury. Yeah. The the Herbert one we don't. I didn't even know about that till this morning. Yeah, there. I don't know that we have much information on it, but it was a he left the field and they quickly said he's out. So you, I mean, that's that's just anecdotal at this point. But a lot of times when a player is like even uh, I think Zach Ertz, he got carted off and they're like questionable. Right. He might be back. And wasn't it late in the game though? And Khalil sometimes Herbert, that's yeah, part of it too, it, perhaps. But Cleo Herbert was immediately ruled out, so hopefully he's all right. Cole Komet got banged up as well in this game. Jerry Judy exited oh, with man. an ankle injury. They uh, they're reporting it's not the Achilles, but it is the back of the ankle. The, the fact that it's not the Achilles after watching it is that feels like a miracle because it was fully non-contact. He went down, grabbed his Achilles, uh, and it, it looks terrible. But if it's just an ankle. Maybe maybe he's back sometime this season. I don't know. Did you see that if they had scored 18 points in every one of their games, they would be 8-1? and one? The Broncos defense, what is happening to you? If, <laughs> if you're out there and you're listening to this podcast. And you're part of the defense. And you're part of the, the, the Denver Broncos defense. I am so sorry. Yeah. Because you guys are awesome. You might be the best defense in the NFL. Fantastic play. Good job, guys. You suck. I mean, we Your team sucks. Sucks. With with Derrick Henry was in the the pun day getting clowned. Yeah, generic Henry. Like, I mean, that takes a pretty strong defense to make that happen. And yet, another L. Yeah. And now no Jerry Judy for a while. Yeah. Man, can you imagine how good the Broncos would be with Geno? They'd be really good. <laughs> oh, my God. It's not even a joke. Like, it's a joke. It said... To make a joke, but it's yeah. actually true. I mean, what we, I think that we still need. I'll, I'll put it out there. I think we still need a little bit of time to know for sure that Russell Wilson is toast with the injuries that, like, they, well, there are a number: a yeah. torn lat, a bum hamstring. Yeah, the hand last year. Um, yeah, the brain, <laughs> the uh, the sandwiches. Yeah. No, I mean, ultimately, there's a process for this process. One is is going to be to blame the coach. I mean, if he continues to struggle, oh, I can do that. If he continues to struggle, it will be one hundred percent Nathaniel Hackett's fault. Yep. Um, then there's injury, and then eventually acceptance, and that's when you make a trade for like a Drew Locke and get your offense going. Uh, Gerald Everett groin injury mm. out. Deshaun Watson eligible to return to practice Voldemort. this week and can play in week thirteen. Who's Voldemort? Oh, I get it. I love it. He who, he who shall yeah. not be named. Okay. Oh, my goodness. That's, yeah. that's a good nickname. Voldemort it is. <laughs> uh, PJ. It's, oh, man. <laughs> High ankle sprain for PJ Walker. Steve Wilkes said Baker's going to get the start against Baltimore. Sure. Start your Baltimore Ravens defense. Oh, man. I don't think I'll ever call him anything but Voldemort again the rest of my life. That's <laughs> so good. It's pretty good, man. <laughs> Uh, Jahan Dotson's officially playing tonight. J.D. McKissick's officially out. Mm. And uh, that was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at USAA.com slash insurance. There were good stories. There from was the weekend. some. There yeah, was good yeah, yeah. stuff. Let's get into it. This week's Fantasy Stud Muffins. Go ahead, Mike. Justin Fields forever. <laughs> It, I mean, look, it took me and Kyle out, but that's all right because Justin Fields is a thing. The guy is dominating over the last five weeks. Uh, the leading rusher in the league is quarterback Justin Fields, 12 for 20 through the air. Uh, two huge touchdowns to uh, start of the week, Cole Komet, who chasing the points came through, but 13 for 147 and two on the ground, just a week after breaking the regular season single game rushing record for a quarterback, puts 147 up. This is this is sensational and so much fun to watch. He is on pace to break the single season record for rushing, <laughs> and, and he will. And he just got started. Like it's really. 
If you have Justin Fields and you were on yep. the, uh, and you were on the cusp yep. of being a good fantasy team, there is a decent chance you can ride Justin Fields into a championship. Like that is the it's not a guarantee, but it is a possibility. You do have a bye week coming up, but the defense is that bad and the offense is that effective now. Well, the the bye week is not for a while, and this week coming up, Atlanta. That's uh, yeah. I mean, I don't even know if that's good. He's for been, Justin Fields, he's been better again. I mean, it's yes, it's, it's all good for Justin Fields, but yes. it's not as good as playing a good team. Yeah, you want a team that's going to score points, and uh, you have to play catch up. If he's, you take out the first two weeks where this new coaching staff was trying to figure out what to do with Justin Fields, and obviously there's a very completely different offense in the beginning of the year. Since week three on, he's on pace for a 1,500 rushing yard season. That's like as good as a running back can do Yeah, as quarterback. So, you know, I'm, I'm seeing questions about trading-wise with Justin Fields. Would you trade him high? Uh, doubt it. Yeah, there are. I mean, usually it's pretty good advice to to trade high when someone's exploding like this, but this is the type of player that you, if you added him off the waiver wire a week ago, two weeks ago, I mean, when, when a quarterback is putting up 40 to 50 points in your scoring format, doubling every other quarterback, I don't, I don't know why you would trade at this point of the season. No, you just got to think. I think you keep capturing that, you know, lightning in a yeah. bottle for the rest of the year. The thing is about Justin Fields, and I agree with you, Andy, it's better if he plays a good offense, a good team. I mean, we, we saw when he played against the Dallas Cowboys, great defense, he was a top-five quarterback. New England, in New England, he was a top-five quarterback. Right, but New England's not a good offense. No, I'm sure, but I'm saying the, the defense was scary. But if you look at the playoffs, week 15, week 16, to start your fantasy playoffs, the Philadelphia Eagles... That's a problem. And the Buffalo Bills. That's a problem. I'm saying I think that could be great for Justin Fields. I mean, mm. if the I don't know how anybody stops what he's able to do. If the Buffalo Bills have shown anything over the last couple of weeks, it's that people can act. They can run on them. That's like, true. Running backs have been having success, and if Justin Fields is the running back, maybe just don't worry about the opponent in play. Yeah, Justin Fields. Yeah. Yep. Well, Patrick Mahomes is really good. Yep. Four more touchdowns. Ran for 39 yards, and then uh, Tua Tungavailoa continues to be hyper-efficient. Yep. Off, the offense did not punt. Yeah, the whole game. Yeah, I, I guess I don't know if they punted once they brought the backups in with two minutes left or whatever, but up until Tua left the field, they never punted the football. Um, You know, Mike McDaniel's got it going. With and this the, scheme, and they go for it, too. I, I don't know how you stop this offense because what – Jeff Wilson and Raheem Mostert are able to do as a one-two punch on the ground while you have the the unbelievable one-two punch of Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddle. Like, I just don't I don't think you can plan for those four players. They're too fast. It's uh it's been fun to watch in Miami and uh their defense is not strong enough to keep people at bay, so it's it's been fun to you know, it it's crazy. Because Miami was a team that was in the Voldemort sweepstakes as well yes. as Russell Wilson situation. You know, you had, oh, we got to move on from Tua. Like, Tua is great. Like, he's playing great football. 25 for 32, 285 and 3. Um, it's been impressive. What are we going to do? Uh, uh, what, what are we going to do uh, um, in our DraftKings lineups this week without Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddell? Because they're staples? Yeah, they're just they're they're so good, but now they're going on by. That's so sad. I might play them anyway. Okay. Mm. Yeah, that's probably my advice to the. Did I do that right, Kyle? For the DFS world, do you play them even on by? Yeah, that, just just lock them in right lock now. Lock them. Got it. Or Thank you. you you play the the wide receiver one for this next guy. For Matt Ryan. Yeah. Uh, I don't I don't know how Matt Ryan's in the studs of the section. I think with two twenty two and one on the. Through he, the air, he had a rushing touchdown as well. And yeah, I mean, that's, yards. I that's think it's not. It's, you know, oh, the quarterback scoring was. You just want to talk about Matt Ryan? Is that what? Quarterback it is? scoring was not fantastic this week, but uh, Matt Ryan started after the declaration that Sam Ellinger would be the starter for the rest of the season. It and was then a you, genius move by. Matt, and then you Matt fire Saturday. the coach. Jeff Saturday, and you're like, oh, we should put Matt Ryan back in. 
Apparently, this was good enough for QB4 on the week. It really? Uh, 222 and one through the air. I mean, look, he had, the he, had the, he had the run. He had like a – so he had finished with 38 yards. I thought that the run was 39 yards. That sounds about right. <laughs> but it was – seeing Matt Ryan run down the field through open space, it was very exhilarating. Uh, Mike, let's be accurate, jog. He jogged down the okay, field. Okay, well, no, he was putting the effort in. He, was, <laughs> yeah, he, was he wasn't jogging. He was running. We did af – immediately following his jaunt, I'll say. Okay, that's fine. Um, we did. I did do a little Google search on his age because I wanted to see how close I was to Matt Ryan's age because that looked like I would have looked going down the field. Uh, I, oh, go on. No, you did. You want to <laughs> say I would have been much faster? Go on. No, I, I just wanted to confirm it was a 39-yard run. Good, good. Uh, Aaron Rodgers' first three touchdown game of the year, all three of them to the rookie, Christian Watson. Mm -hmm. uh, this was a game in which the Packers – you know, 14 completions for Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, they established it. Yeah, there was a lot of Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon, which makes sense. Dak, 26 for 46, passed it 26 more times than Rodgers in the same game. Three touchdowns, but two picks. Has Minnesota in Minnesota next week. That'll be an exciting game. Uh, Josh Allen was... Wait, Josh Allen made it on the list? I mean, it was a disappointing game for him. He's definitely struggling right now. Two picks, one touchdown but 84 rushing yards is going to get you on the list. Okay. Um, let's skip this next guy here at running back. Uh, no, <laughs> well, I mean, look, Jonathan Taylor, 22 for 147 and one. Uh, he was on the field for 100% of the Colts passing plays. Let's not forget the fallout from Naeem Hines' trade. Sure. Which was, you know, he was a staple on third down, uh, getting out there at least for a, a good portion of them. And now Jonathan Taylor – Healthy? Yep. Raiders plus explosive plays equals monster game. Yeah, I mean the the what we've been waiting for is him to be healthy and you just weren't sure how long it's gonna take with the coaching change, what's gonna happen, yada yada yada. Well he was back, he was healthy. Philly uh, next week. Yeah, you don't have a sixty six uh -oh. yard run <laughs> unless you're healthy. And obviously that is not the best matchup, but they did lose uh was Jordan Davis in the middle of that defense. Philly was ran on quite a bit last week, weren't they? So I'm I'm interested. They'll play tonight, and we'll see how their their run defense holds up. Uh, we've got other running backs to talk about, but I'm going to take a quick break and then come back and talk about Aaron Jones. Twenty four for one thirty eight and one. Aaron Jones, the RB eight on the year, doing what he what? does. That's just that seems not fair. Uh, he's super good at football. I agree, but so many games of being like, so the running back 30, so he's been the running back 29 or worse five times. So 50%? He's, he's Like the Aaron Jones of always? Yeah, just yeah. saying. that It feels unfair for it, you to be bad 50% of the time, but you're like, nope, I'm running back eight, baby. Well, because when he's good, he's great. And it's it's weird. You see these boom bust type of players all the time but they are usually wide receivers who you know the Gabe Davis where you know you yeah when he catches the ball it's usually in the end zone and you get big performances and and low volume you don't see that as much with running backs because their volume is more secure but that's certainly how it is with uh Aaron Jones Brooksy, do we have playoff primer this Wednesday? Is that the schedule? Yes, sir. So we'll be looking at some of the end of season schedules for these players which is going to be pretty important especially for you know, 50-50 guys like Aaron Jones, see what they have uh, coming down the stretch. Tennessee, Philadelphia the next two weeks. Saquon Barkley, 35 carries. Yikes. For 152-1, and one, and they tabled extension talks. They had brought them up during the bye week, but uh, no extension yet. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not fair when you get to play Houston um, and you're Saquon Barkley. You can expect a massive performance. It's also not fair when you get to play – the Lions, and that is who he gets to play yeah, next Bar week. Yeah, Barkley's doing the old uh, wait one more matchup. <laughs> right, <laughs> well, yeah. Well, I can get some more value, and then he'll bring the contract back up. Dalvin Cook had an 81-yard touchdown run, went 14 for 119 and one. He's the RB9 on the year, just behind Aaron Jones. Yeah, great. <laughs> still got it. He's still got the juice, yeah, he's man, good. To, he's to good. pull away from people. Uh, James Conner, you guys talked about him as a buy candidate. Yeah. He, he was also a touchdown 
positive touchdown regression candidate, and he scored twice, uh, played 96% of snaps. Yeah, like, you know, Benjamin didn't even see the field, I think. Maybe one carry, one snap. It was all Connor. Um, so never not working. It kind of came true in never not working for all the names we mentioned. Devin Singletary was another one. He ended up scoring twice this week. Chris Godwin. Yeah. Uh, oh, which baby. Which was also oh, your touchdown baby. guarantee. Your touchdown guarantee. I was getting a little scared. Got into the second half. Godwin wasn't getting the targets, but I was scared I'm just when the, I wasn't scared. They threw the flag on the touchdown. I was like, no. And then they picked it back. Up. I gave him a call. Yeah, thank I, you. I buzzed them. I said, no, nope, this one stands. Uh, but you put uh, you put a few bucks down on it, right? I sure did. Paid off. Put a little Sammy. <laughs> put a little Sammy down. Impressive. How often do you bet fifty five instead of fifty? All every time, every <laughs> single time. You go through and look at my bets. I'm uh, you go fifty five just to get my, the for my, the brand. Yeah, it's my unit. Fifty five. That's a, that's that may not be the uh, most responsible of no. betting units. No, no, I'm not. I'm not recommending anybody do anything. I'm just saying this is what I'm doing. That's your unit. Let's talk about the Miami Super Backfield. Uh, both. Jeff Wilson and Raheem Mostert scored a rushing touchdown. Jeff Wilson was 17 for 119 and 1. Raheem Mostert was 8 for 65 and 1. Mostert had four receptions for 22 yards. Wilson had two for 24. Yeah, feels uh feels really good to have dropped Jeff Wilson after the Christian McCaffrey trade. Wow. You shouldn't have done that. Whoops. Shouldn't have done that. Uh wow, yeah, that is um yeah, oh, because because McCaffrey came over. Yeah, Wilson, Wilson wasn't was, traded yet. Yeah, gotcha. It, yeah. I mean, it was he was just a backup then, <laughs> and then he got traded, and now he's the starter I, for Miami. I don't know. It seems like the backup to Christian McCaffrey <laughs> might enough. be the starter. Uh, bye week for the Dolphins running backs, and then they get Houston on the way out to make up for the missed week. They'll just tack those yards, double up the points. Yeah. yeah. Tony Pollard, 22 for 115. First time he's gotten over 15 carries in a game. Scored a touchdown. Looked great as always. Minnesota next week, we'll see yeah. if Zeke is soft. <laughs> His words. His words, not mine. Josh Jacobs, 21 for 78 and a touchdown. He also got targeted a lot in yeah. this game. We, you know, missing Renfro and Waller, we were like, oh, Matt Collins. Well, it's Josh Jacobs. Yeah, I think you, you will see that more and more. He's a very capable pass catcher, and they need to utilize him in that game. That being said, he's on the road in Denver. This coming week, not a not a great uh, matchup. They He's, are bad. The Raiders. Oh, they're they're real bad, they're and bad. it's it's unraveling. Yeah. Can yeah. you start Russell Wilson? No, no. Uh, he, didn't he already yeah. have a good game against the Raiders? But no, Jerry yeah. Judy now. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I'm sure there's someone else we could find, but maybe I'd start. It's funny because <laughs> I wouldn't start Russ, but I would start Sutton and Greg D yeah. against the Raiders. So. Yep. Ipso facto, <laughs> Russ should be okay. Deonta Foreman did it again. 31 for 130 and 1 on Thursday night. If only he could play the Falcons every single week. Oh, well, that's who he dominated before, right? Yes. Yep. What happened last night? Christian McCaffrey, 14 for 38 on the ground. Elijah Mitchell, 18 for 89 on the ground. Targets went to McCaffrey? Yep. Touchdown went to McCaffrey. I mean, was the, this a, was this just hot hand? Like, did Elijah Mitchell have it on that, the ground? That is my interpretation of it because Elijah Mitchell looked great, um, and McCaffrey was pretty inefficient with with his carries, but he got twenty opportunities. And if you if you had finished the game, like if Elijah Mitchell hadn't had uh, not had eighteen for eighty nine, you just said, "Well, we got twenty opportunities for Christian McCaffrey." You'd be like, "Okay." That's not bad. It feels bad when you put it next to the fact that another running back got 20, got 20 opportunities. So, I mean, it just was everything went to the running back position. They are they're playing for the playoffs. They're going to try and make sure that Christian McCaffrey doesn't get overloaded like he did in Carolina. So, I'm not I'm not super concerned about it. He yeah. did have sorry, Jason. He had 36 opportunities in the previous week. So we that's how it feels bad, too. Like his, sure. his opportunities were nearly cut in half from his super week. Yeah. That being said, it was 65% of the snaps for Christian McCaffrey, 35% of the snaps for Elijah Mitchell. Okay. So I don't, I don't see Elijah Mitchell as someone that you can reliably start. Uh, obviously, he got a ton of carries, looked great, and you might be able to put him in as a flex option. But I, you know... 
thirty-five percent of the snaps. He's he is the backup here. Where if you don't get a ton of work, I think you could be disappointed. There's a good run: Arizona, Saints, Miami. And I think That's Elijah Mitchell, like Mike said, trying to keep McCaffrey a little bit healthier. Um, it, it's good. he wasn't going to stay healthy with forty opportunities a game, right? No, it, it's good for the Forty ers It's good for McCaffrey. <laughs> Ironically, it seems very similar to what they're doing with Jeff Wilson and Raheem Mostert from that you know same system that went to Miami. Like, just use both. It's funny because as fantasy players, we tell ourselves we want 36, 40 opportunities for your player, but you can't, you know, go back in time and say like, all right, just give me twenty, but give me him the whole year. Like you don't get to go back after an injury and say that like, oh no, wait, just take five opportunities right. away for the last six weeks, and I'd rather keep him on the roster. But sometimes that's what it takes. Yeah, I'm always afraid when when Derrick Henry has his thirty five carry game. I'm like, okay, thank you, but. <laughs> Maybe calm yeah. down a little bit. C.D. Lamb. Let's start at the wide receiver position. C.D. Lamb. Yeah. Fifteen targets, eleven for one fifty and two. Monster game. Huge week. Much better than Waddle over in a dynasty <laughs> league. <laughs> yeah. Any regrets? One weekend? Uh, not yet. But it was. Look, it no, was I, really, I'm, really I'm nice. Just kidding. It was very nice to see. A, an alpha game with Dak Prescott. This is you really haven't uh, seen this type of a performance when given the opportunity before, and being the number one wide receiver on a week that is awesome. Is this Ceedee Lamb's highest fantasy total in his career? I have to yes. I, had a I haven't looked it up, but yes, thirty-one point six points last year in one game. What was it yesterday? Thirty-two. So this. Well, there you go. Yeah. I think that might have been Ceedee Lamb's best game. I just verified it is. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's that's impressive and a tough defense, too. So, Christian Watson, eight targets, four for one of seven and three. This team seems very committed to Christian Watson. I mean, every time sure. he's come back from a concussion or a hamstring, which has been like almost a handful of times, they do put him right back out there, and Aaron Rodgers does take a chance on that speed. Two bad drops in this game as well. Uh, thankfully, he caught three touchdowns, So, and they won. He's the hero. He'll be very interesting going forward as far as can you actually rely on him. 40. Next week, they're at home again. The Tennessee Titans defense is beatable mm -hmm. by players like Christian Watson specifically. I'm sure I'm going to put him in my lineup and get a goose. 42% <laughs> of the targets for Christian Watson. And Mike was bemoaning the usage yeah. of Alan Lazard, but Aaron Rodgers had eyes for for the youngster. Well, I mean, I it had made total sense because Watson just kept burning everybody. He's very fast. He's he's very fast. Justin Jefferson, sixteen targets, ten for one ninety three, one touchdown, including the best catch I've ever seen. It. That's your favorite of all time. I, I think that is my favorite catch I've ever seen, better than the Odell Beckham catch. It was the Odell. It was the Odell Beckham catch, but with a defender who's got his hands on the a, ball. It too. was a, it was a top tier catch. It yeah well, th th that one and the Edelman one. Those are the two that come to mind. The Edelman Super Bowl the double catch. The double catch. Yeah yeah yeah. The, I mean David Tyree's catch is in there. Mm -hmm. The the yeah the, the Tyree situation was makes it elevated as well but the the situation for the Jefferson catch was it was fourth and 18 right if they don't catch this the game is over because the Bills would have been able to run out the clock and the defender had two hands on it Jefferson had one and <laughs> took his lunch money Jefferson is currently sitting at the third most receiving yards by a wide receiver in the first nine games of a season ironically Tyreek Hill is ahead of him this year as well it's, and I mean, and Justin Jefferson had uh, like a terrible game, right? Am I remember that? Like, oh, you're saying earlier on oh, the season? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He did. I can verify that he's on my league of record team, and he had Dude, his worst don't performance you ever. Dare complain about Justin Jefferson? We, I am not. Don't I'm you just dare? Saying, but just, I'm saying to be where he is with the yardage. Week two, forty-eight yards. Week three, fourteen yards. He had fourteen yards against the Lions. Yeah, and here he is, just. Dominating. He's very good. Dallas next week. Yeah, he's fine. Well, always. And then <laughs> but Dallas and then New England. Christian Kirk bounced back again. Nine yeah. for one oh five and two. 
So he's been super used in the red zone. And then uh, Devontae Adams, 9 for 1, 26 and 1. 14 targets. He was Keep kind him of rolling. He was he was balling out. Stephon Diggs, Gabe Davis, both had big weeks. Gabe Davis, 6 for 93 and 1, was great to see. 12 for 128 for Diggs, including Another. an amazing one handed catch yeah. in this game. I mean, he jumped twice his height. I mean, that, that Bills, the Bills Vikings game, if you didn't get to experience it live, I am so sorry for you because that is a game that will be into the history books. Yeah, it's certainly the game of the year. The last minute of that game was the <laughs> wild of, of regulation was just wild and practical, impossible. And uh, thankfully, the Vikings won. And I say that only because on on the the last drive for the bills there was a booth replay that never happened that should have negated a a pretty important play whenever that yeah the Gabe Davis catch that should have been overruled that instead goes to Gabe Davis and helps his fantasy points and there are people out there right now had that play been yep, different definitely they win and Gabe Davis doesn't get those points Amon Ross St. Brown 11 targets or as Mike calls him Amon Roar St. Brown uh 10 for 119 Arr. came back to form Nice to see as well. Didn't get into the end zone. I don't think he scored since like week week two. Two. I was going to say three. Yeah, that's been a while. Paris Campbell. Oh, the awful tower is back. Yeah, what was this? Built beam by beam. Yes, by Matt Ryan. <laughs> Seven for 76 and a touchdown. Three games with Matt Ryan. The last three, 97% route participation, 29 targets, 24 receptions, three touchdowns. Paris Campbell is this year's Hunter Renfro of sorts. It is. Is so is so baffling that and it, I mean it makes sense, but I'm saying that seeing these players where if you're matched up with a certain quarterback, your career goes two completely different directions because the way that Sam Ellinger played, Paris Campbell did not get targets. He just that that was not the way that that Sam played football. But Matt Ryan pairs perfectly with the way that Paris Campbell is used in this offense and. He's, he's a continue. better play than Michael Pittman. That, that when I was saying the wide receiver won at the when we were talking about Matt Ryan, I was making the joke of it's Paris Campbell because he just he gets nonstop targets. He's a he's a better play than Pittman. He his three games with Ryan were all top twelve, and Naeem Hines is gone. Yeah, like that is not you don't have short area targets with Naeem Hines. So we we've all been we've all been kind of like taking the brunt of this whole head coaching change, quarterback change situation. Like Jason traded away Michael Pittman on the basis of we're stuck with Sam Ellinger, mm -hmm. right? Uh, Jonathan Taylor didn't look great with Sam Ellinger's situation moving forward. That's been changed. Paris Campbell too. Yep. Uh, Kadarius Tony four for 57 and a touchdown. You had a game where you, you already missing McCall Hardman due to injury. And now you're going to be missing Juju Smith Schuster. Tony is dynamic. Yep. He's so crazy out there, and it look, he, we've said this before. A lot of people have said this. He just looks like Tyree Kill in that in that short area burst that pretty much no one else on the planet has. He's f now forced into the lineup as far as you know. He's going to be playing a really important amount of snaps. I I would assume this next week against the Chargers, he's going to be a must start type of player. Chris Godwin, eight targets, six for seventy one, and a touchdown. Heads into the bye. He, uh, I hope you bought low because, and maybe you can buy him because he is on the bye week. Uh, coming, a bye bye. Bye bye bye. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, there was talk by the sideline reporter about Chris Godwin talking about his recovery and his health and the fact that, you know, he hasn't been able to do the same cuts and be the same player yet, but he's feeling like he's finally getting there. And he was like, this is the time I feel like the breakout's about to happen. But now he goes into a week of rest. Where coming out for the second half of the season, he should be a really, really good fantasy wide receiver. I believe Tom Brady leads the league in pass attempts by a wide margin. Yeah, but it didn't happen this last week. They finally flipped that script. I think this was the most rushing attempts in the last three years for a Tom Brady team. It shows you that efficiency is sometimes more valuable, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Uh, I think the two leading pass attempt players, Herbert and Brady, have struggled for fantasy purposes. This was a game where Brady got in the end zone a couple times. Tight ends. 
Oh, he got there fast. <laughs> and then <laughs> took it slow. That's where we yes. want to go. If it can, We're it, down in Kokomet. Can Kokomet, please. <laughs> it's Kokomo. I refuse. Okay. Uh, can Kokomet please be a thing? Uh, please? They, sure. He did get injured or four for 74 two touchdowns yeah we will we'll need to scour the news this week to see if he's good to go uh, but becoming a thing at tight end is very easy you just do this once well it's just twice now i know that's it. so he's definitely a thing in atlanta okay. come on just oh, be healthy though the, the injury is a, a concern Travis kelsey six for 81 and a touchdown on seven targets he's great he'll continue to be great especially with the tight or the uh, wide receiver injuries Dalton Schultz, the doctor. I mean, we, we said this early. He's Go back. get him when yep. Dak returned. His four games with Dak: seven for sixty-two, five for forty-nine, six for seventy-four, and now six for fifty-four and a touchdown. Yep, very solid. He is going to be reliable, and that is that's at the top of the resume for the tight end position. Reliable. Mm -hmm. Juwan Johnson scored again. Uh, Foster Moreau scored, and uh, Tyler Higby eight. Yep. <sighs> For th 73. Yep. Uh, with no Cooper Cup moving forward, Tyler Higby will become Mr. Necessary. Yep. After the sure three bad will. weeks, big start against Arizona. A lot of garbage time uh, with Mr. Wolford as well. Dud time? Sure. Pooped in his big boy pants. It is just not happening for Justin Herbert this year. His, his pants are shrinking by it, the moment. It is not his fault. No, it isn't. I mean, you just have lost all of your weapons. When you don't have Keenan, you don't have Mike Williams, you lose Gerald Everett. I mean, Gerald Everett was probably his best weapon on the field. Think about what I just said. Gerald Everett was his best weapon, and then he loses that. It's not, it's not fair. He is completing 66% of his passes, which he did last year and the year before. So everything that... You know, from completing passes perspective, you just don't have explosive plays. He's keeping them short. Yeah, and uh, Joshua Palmer did not do him any favors yesterday. I, w I will say that that is true, Mike. Watching the game, having Joshua Palmer, I was very disappointed with how often the checkdowns came. So, there, uh, you know. Yards per attempt is down by 1.2, and the offensive line is hurt. Yeah, they've dealt with so many injuries, and they're still a good team. They are still in that playoff hunt uh the, you know they won or they were leading for a lot of that game last night but he needs playmakers and he has very few right now do you think uh mike has any regrets about mr andy dalton yeah it did not work out those underpants filled yeah they, they are filled, filled. and yes. you can't they don't absorb no no that's You've why been you sitting that, in it that's why you wear them uh yeah it was at the first step bad. i agree but I thought that he would be able to get it done. In the first half, we were trending to exactly what you need of about 200-plus and two touchdowns. But second half really fell apart. There was Why won't they play Jameis Winston? I don't know. I do not have any idea what's going on with the quarterback room, and they're insisting to put uh, Andy Dalton out it's there. It's not been great for Olave with Andy Dalton. and It's not been great for the Saints. I don't, Their season's lost. I mean, obviously, it's it's over, and now it's you know what do they do for the future at quarterback? It's very bizarre. Like Jameis, uh, I don't know. To me, like I'm I'm an outsider, but it seemed like Jameis was playing fine, and then he had a what fractures in his back. Uh, an article came out. I didn't get a chance to read the full article, but it was Jameis Winston saying that he was told he would not be replaced if he took some time to heal. And he got replaced by Andy Dalton because it sounds like Jameis is actually healthy and could play now. Maybe he gets back in next week, though. We shall see Russell Wilson, Tom Brady, Jimmy G. Brady was uh, 258-2. and two. Yeah. How, did, how is that a bad finish and the Matt Ryan is a good finish? I'm so confused. The, 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 Matt Ryan had 38 the, yards and a yeah, rushing touchdown. He had an extra passing touchdown if you count his rushing yards. Okay. All right. Jimmy G got it done, but the uh you know the win. What was what was the record? Ten and two. Ten and two. Jimmy Garoppolo is ten and two when throwing for zero touchdowns. <laughs> I mean the team is just 
The team is so much better when you don't throw touchdowns. How is that a possible stat? I mean, this that's wild. He's great at inspiring you, from the huddle. Yeah, you have to yeah. score to win a game. He's like, like Christian, I'm gonna hand this ball to you so good. You you take care of it. Eliza, you be the missile. I'm gonna get I'm gonna put that ball right in your tummy tum and then you run. <laughs> Maybe it makes the defense play harder because they know that, you know. It's going to be a slow, a it tight could, margin. It, yeah, it's, maybe it's frustrating for the other defense when they're like, guys, it's Jimmy Garoppolo. This should not be a problem. And then you just start slowly losing. Like, guys, we shouldn't be losing to Jimmy Garoppolo. And then they He's start. very handsome. They could be looking at him and in the eyes. And everyone starts, oh, yeah. 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 yeah, the handsome factor. Yeah. He just, bink. Oh, Yo, the wink? Yeah. Shoots. And then that lets the running backs go wild. <laughs> <laughs> Alvin Kamara, 8 for 26. Dude. What? The Pittsburgh defense is much better with T.J. Watt. They were great sure. in the beginning of the year. They lost Watt. They were bad. But they got Watt back. They were good. The, the My biggest what is 12 opportunities for Alvin Kamara. Their and drives it, were ending so quick. In a game that was like very close. I, I think it was 10-10 to 10 at the half. So it was the usage was very bizarre. Anti-Dalton. That's that's my yeah. new policy. The the usage, it wasn't like they weren't getting Kamara involved. It was what Andy said. They didn't have very many plays. It was three and out. He had eighty nine percent of the running back rush temps. Like he, he he got it all. There just wasn't anything to have because it was a very defensive battle in this game. Very Are you ugly telling me football. that there was a total of nine running back rush attempts? That's that what the, the math would because he had eight, and you said eighty nine percent. That's weird. Derrick Henry, nineteen for fifty three, did not break the big one, and that hurt you against Denver's staunch defense. Yeah, staunch? Good. staunch not a word. Staunch, is it? I believe, is the word you're looking for. Yes, I feel like Papa Josh was nodding that it was a word. No, staunch is a strange St word. Staunch is a good word. Staunch. Staunch is a new one. Staunch isn't a word. Right. Uh, staunch is is a, a good word, but it also. <laughs> One of the things that it, it it just sounds smelly, staunch. Yeah. That's oh, like something saying. gets stuck in your staunch. Uh, no. Oh, not, not like so that. Much that. Not that. Okay. But like you know, it's just uh, if it's stinky. It's the the actual it is definition is loyal and committed in attitude. Yeah. 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 I have a staunch opinion about you know. Well, I thought I had a staunch opinion about Taysom Hill, but I'm starting to flip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <I> saw, <laughs> How's it going, Taysom Hill, people? Yeah. I mean, as somebody who who is invested in Chris Olave, yeah. You know, it just feels like you are tossing an anvil off the back of your boat when you are finally piecing a drive together. And I know Taysom Hill is very much when he plays great, you're happy. Yeah. And when he doesn't, you can make fun of it. But man, he's annoying me right now. <laughs> Because he's been coming into these games and Welcome doing nothing. Welcome to the party, pal. Like, I feel like you're better off. Like, why isn't this offense willing to just play him a quarterback? At least you'd have the Justin Fields right. pathway to success for the Saints offense. Yes. the ev Everything that's going on with the Saints right now is makes no sense. No. No. Very staunt. Uh, Austin Eckler, DeAndre Swift. Oh, DeAndre Swift. What is happening? <laughs> You might have He's, DeAndre Swift on your trade. Yeah, yeah, DeAndre Swift is just simply not healthy, and that's seen by them having him, you know, sub thirty percent snaps. He's not on the field that much. They're trying to help him get healthy, and until, I mean, what, what's crazy is he got another touchdown. So he's like, he almost had two. He, right, should have had two. That, yeah. <laughs> that jump at the goal line was Kyle, pretty I can't, comical. Kyle, I can't read that definition. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But but there is apparently a an urban staunt diction. Staunt is a word. Well, that's an urban dictionary. Oh yeah, nope, nope, nope. Of, uh, uh, word. Yep. It's it's um, hide your kids. <laughs> it's a word that I won't use ever again. Uh, Cordero Patterson. Yeah. I, what happened in that game? I don't know. Avery Williams was getting carries, and and it was important like end of game drives for the Falcons, and Cordero wasn't anywhere to be seen. Like. Do you have any insight there, Kyle? Yeah, they Being, gave a, a third down carry to Williams that was like mind blowing. And it was an important down. Yeah. No, so, no comment. No comment from the Atlanta truthers out there. You don't understand the usage? 
Not a maybe not, he's not just feeling it. The only thing I know is back. I know Patterson did come out and he had been having to respond to a number of tweets related to yeah. fantasy production. Don't tweet at players. But he did take it in stride. At least. Have you, are, do you know his handle? Uh, I don't remember it. It's uh, I, I don't remember the whole thing, but it is it is C something P, but he spells out P like P E E. Mm -hmm. Very quality. Um, it's a good old P joke right in the Twitter handle. I was trying to find him, but there's a lot of verified Cordero Patterson. <laughs> Oh man! So I'm not gonna be able to find it. That's funny. Is that true? Uh, or is that just a good joke? I was just joking. Oh, that's a yeah. good joke. Yeah. Right. I I sincerely can't find him, but um, yeah, there you go. Uh, let's talk about a couple other players here. David Montgomery has been declining, right? Like fantasy production under 10 points for three straight weeks. These are games that the Bears are scoring 30 points, and he's not producing. He's a backup running back to the starting running back who gets the ball first every time the ball goes into the hands of Justin Fields it's very difficult when Fields is rushing for 150 yards to have anyone else do anything good now that being said if Khalil Herbert misses time we don't know the you know the depth of that hip injury but if you combine what Khalil Herbert and David Montgomery have been doing you got a RB4 you have a you have a decent running back there yeah, that would be something to watch this week, especially with bye weeks for some other players. Uh, you might not pivot away from David Montgomery quite yet, as Ag tempting as it might Agreed. be. Agreed. Travis Etienne, not a good game against Kansas City. 11 for 45, did have three targets for 28 yeah, yards. I would just let it go. Jermichael Hasty is seeing the field too much. Agreed. It's He is not Hasty. He needs a different name. Uh, Clyde edwards Alaire. Oh man! Do Full? we have? Do you have? We have the sad music. Uh, I'm sure we've got some sad music. I mean, just his stat line: a zero for zero on the ground. Yes, go on. Uh, he did see two targets, but his final stat line in the receiving game was also zero for zero. He saw six percent of the snaps. First round pick. I got three more letters for you. Clyde edwards alaire B Y E. Bring your evening? Yes, that's right. <laughs> you nailed it first try, Mike. Bring your evening. I think you were with me, Jason. I have no idea. He Please was, he was just spelling by. Yeah. Oh, yeah, goodbye. Okay. I mean, Clyde, gotcha. Clyde is... Uh, he doesn't represent anything positive for your fantasy roster. So, to me, I'd rather drop the bomb on the waiver wire. Let yeah, somebody oh. else put him... On their roster, because his name is Clyde Edwards. One hundred percent. In games that they're going to be able to run, it's going to be Isaiah Pacheco. In games that they have to throw, it's going to be Jarek McKinnon. Do you know? I'm looking this up. Uh, it, it appears he played four total snaps. One was around the goal line. Yeah. Yep. And, and we literally didn't know who it was. We had watched the game so long. It was like, well, who is that? <laughs> Do you remember him from years past? They made the wrong pick. Yeah. Which, doesn't, which made a lot of us make the wrong pick. Mr. Uh, Reed. Yeah. Bray, he's Brain Westbrook. <laughs> <laughs> that's Andy Reid's voice. Is that you? No, yeah. that's Andy Reid. Oh, please do it again. <laughs> he's the wildest boy running back in the wilderness. Clyde. Oh. Get on the bench, Clyde. <laughs> I got a seventh rounder to replace you. <laughs> Oh, Let man. Let me give you a mustache. He's Brian Westbrook. <laughs> they were trying to imbue that Brian Westbrook into Clyde. D hey, they were the ones that were telling me these things. Right, that's not on you. No. Should have drafted Jonathan Taylor. They would yeah. be really, really good with Jonathan Taylor. They should have traded for Kareem Hunt. Get him back on the roster. Kareem Hunt's not being Speaking used. Speaking of Kareem Hunt. What is Hunt? happening with Kareem Hunt? You got a Kareem Why did you not trade him? Yeah. You stupid Browns, you're not going to use him and you're going to just not let him go anywhere and have relevance? Oh, like, that's so upsetting. Kareem, punt him off a bridge right yeah. now. I mean, they, I guess it, if you're looking at, you know, the, the pick situation, they, if Kareem Hunt goes and, and signs anything of a relevant contract, they could get a third round pick, uh, added just because of, of the compensatory and maybe no one was willing to trade a three and so they just said hey 
We'd rather wait on the three than take a four. Kareem Hunt is uh, not doing it for it's, your fantasy team. Would you rather have Hunt or Montgomery rest of the season? Montgomery, okay. easily. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that and give me Montgomery. the guy playing seventy percent of the snaps as opposed to thirty percent of the snaps. That's what that's what Kareem Hunt played. It's just dumb. I when they were losing, that's his lowest of the year. They're losing the whole entire game. Kareem Hunt is a very talented pass catching running back, and he saw one target. Yeah, Nick Chubb had uh, four targets. I mean, it's 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 wild. All right, let's blitz these uh, disappointing wide receivers so that people don't have to think about them too long. Yeah. Right. Um. So I'm going to bring up names that I think you could have some real concern with. Okay. okay? Uh, there were dud games for Evans and Waddle. Whatever. No one cares. Yep. You keep playing them, but Debo Samuel. Let's talk mm. about Debo because this was a game that they won, and Brandon Ayuk had 84 yards receiving. He did. Debo had 24 yards receiving on two catches. He had four carries. But Debo has not got it going this year. Now, this was the first week back from an injury. And also, it was f- that's four straight games for Brandon Ayuk with 80-plus yards. Yeah, and I I'm, guess I'm curious your opinion, guys, on, you know, Jason, you brought up trading low for Chris Godwin ahead of his breakout performance touchdown. Is Debo fitting that category for you where you look at him right now as the – he's the wide receiver th- – 26 on the year. Okay, that doesn't sound so bad. But what do we got? Like one, two finishes inside the top 26? Yeah, I'm, I, I, don't view, I don't view Debo as a trade for target. That's not to say he doesn't have good games here or there along the way. He's super talented. You can't tackle him easily. And if you look at this last game, you know, he was on the field for 87% of the snaps. That's, that's how he's always been used he's not you know uh, because of the the scheme there you don't have 100 percent of snaps for uh Debo so his utilization is fine but now with Christian McCaffrey I've got worries like and Brandon, Brandon Ayuk playing well Brandon Ayuk 80 yards four games in a row George Kittle uh, you know Debo I there's just not enough this isn't a team that I think is going to go out there and score 35, 40 points on a regular basis. They have a great defense, and they run the ball. This is a team that I think is going to win a lot of games with uh, you know, 20 to 24 points. And when you divide that up amongst a lot of good options, including Christian McCaffrey, it's going to be inconsistent for the pass catchers. George Kittle will have a good game. Brandon Ayuk will have a good game, and Debo will have good games. But they won't be consistent, and they won't be – weekly happy starts Chris Olave was just three for 40 any concerns there I mean if it's Andy Dalton yeah Joshua Palmer three for 44 has not really again I'm disappointed in the season for Joshua Palmer sure I thought he was capable of becoming more of a I mean especially 100 yards a t- last week you know a part-time alpha right yeah. when your other guys are down Darnell Mooney four for 57 uh, whatever it is what it is Chase Claypool hasn't done anything yet uh, let me bring up um, <laughs> let me bring up a couple of players. One is Amari Cooper, who <laughs> Kyle. I mean, this road road Amari Cooper. I mean, he can't. It's amazing. He can't do it, right? I mean, give me the road totals. He's like two for twenty on average. Yeah, this is the simulation that's confirmed that when he's on the road, just. <laughs> I mean, don't how play do you him. how do you do that though? He's got Buffalo in Buffalo next week. On the road, yeah, no thanks. Put him down. Sit him. Cortland Sutton is a really difficult discussion sure. because it is attempting to find a ruby in a pile in a, of manure. In a dookie? Yeah, in a pile of just... I mean, I don't want to dig through the manure to hopefully find a gem inside of it. So there's part of me that just wants to distance myself from this offense. Cortland Sutton was 6 for 66. That is the mark of the beast. Another reason to stay away. <laughs> um... <laughs> That wow, Josh! Have you never heard that joke? We we tell that joke like every three weeks on this show. Uh, but this one, this time, it's real. Yeah. However, the Raiders. However, no Judy. However, Russell Wilson. I mean, Sutton is probably a flex play. Eleven right now. targets. So yeah. this this isn't me giving you a. Oh, he had thirty five percent of the targets when there was none, but eleven raw targets. That's raw, raw. He also had a couple of great catches yes. where he He's had to go good. up and moss someone he was coming back to the ball falling had to reach behind him on a bad throw c- caught the ball against the Raiders I'm putting Cortland Sutton in my lineup this next week uh, he'll have the 
target percentage. the The matchup is uh, great, and yeah, you're dis you're certainly disappointed with six for sixty six this last week, but talent opportunity. Just wish he had a quarterback. Yeah, well, also, uh, Wandale. Man, Wandale has been oh. useless. Yeah, just to go backwards real quick, I did look up the specific splits for Amari Cooper uh, home and road. Okay. Twenty one points on average at home. Impressive. Five on the road. I mean, they are he 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 basically is dominating right now at home, averaging ten targets at home, ninety receiving yards at home, thirty so on the road. He's got a killer mattress. Is that what it is? I was trying to think is it is it his local Wi Fi or something? I mean I'm, like very comfortable. He's getting whatever rest he gets at home. He doesn't get on the road. Yeah, Kyle. I was I was having Kyle pull up some of the uh, separation numbers for Cortland Sutton because we've all, we've seen Sutton throughout his career be able to high ball, you know, go up and yep. get get it and make a competitive catch, and he's always been good at that. Um, numbers you sending me target separation is ranked eighty second in the league, so that would be uh, I mean that's that's way down there for a guy that's supposed to be a a number one wide receiver. I wonder why he you know. He just disappears. He's disappeared his whole career, and it's it's bewildering. So, but Las Vegas, if you're going to play him, that's yep. the best matchup you can without Jerry Judy. Wandale is, uh, like I said, he's doing nothing. Yeah, Wandale is is doing absolutely jack Been squat. Very very disappointing that we haven't seen the numbers increase. I mean, he's not uh, at this point with bye weeks. I don't roster Wandale. That's fine. Alan Lazard, three for forty five. Yeah, and it was it was all one huge catch in overtime. Uh, it's this is very TBD because Alan Lazard has been quite good on the season. The question will be, Christian Watson is that breakout something that that the team is looking of? This is what we were waiting for. We will now heavily feature Christian Watson, and Alan Lazard is the wide receiver two for the team. Or was this just a very specific matchup? that Watson was able to exploit. They get Tennessee next week. The passing volume, we said it was very, very low for Aaron Rodgers. Uh, so I would still be playing Lazard next week, but eyes will be on it. Jason, Brandon Cooks had seven targets, four for 37. That's kind of a touchdown called back. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of what he's done this year is uh, enough targets to be okay, not enough production to be good for fantasy. Um, obviously, he gets that touchdown. He's not in this section. Uh, but it was nice that he was back out there. And I do think that in the right matchup, you can still start him going forward. All right, real quick here. Uh, disappointing tight end performances. Kittle, Everett with the injury. Yeah. Fryermuth, four for 36 with really a struggling uh, Kenny Pickett. Like, yep. it, he seems very limited right now, and that's going to hurt. Hawkinson, seven for 45. I take How that. That's not, that's not a bad done? game at all. No I way. Mean, Hawkinson had 10 targets. There's, Brooks, there's a, delete that out of here. haters back there. Delete he, it. Hawkinson is a big part of the Vikings it's a great offense. Game. Um, Kyle Pitts two for twenty eight. Greg Dulcich one for eleven. Robert Tunyon one for eight. Uh, yeah. The, the good news for Greg Dulcich, he was still out there essentially, like every snap. This it's a he could take advantage of his offense of, problem of the Judy situation. He could, and they get the Raiders. Yep. So I think Greg D can climb into your lineup, especially if you lost uh, a tight end like. Zachary Ertz to injury. Taysom Hill outscored Clyde Edwards Alaire by one yard. Just wanted to be, dude, just putting it in perspective. Climb that hill. Shout it from the top, <laughs> Mike. This is oh this is your look, time to shine. I mean, he's coming back for like oh I know I four hundred yards next. I know week. next week. That's uh, this is the game that you play when you're anti Taysom Hill. Is they'll name him the starter next it, week. Like you know those the, the old school movie fights where it's just. Completely unblocked haymakers. Oh you, yeah, and you just absorb it, and then you you just trade them. That's that's me and Taysom Hill. It's it's just good good fun. Anybody else you want to talk about, Jason? No, nobody else. Uh, I'm sure there will be massive duds on my uh, roster tonight <laughs> in Monday Night Football. Good to see we could uh, <laughs> bring it back where it belongs. In me. my in my heart, <laughs> division leader over here, Jason Moore, on the way to the playoffs. Yeah. Just. Uh, you know, emotionally processing the yeah. season. Mm. A loss we all is a loss. we all want to win too. We all want to win. Let's let's uh, let's see what happens tonight. Well, we got a big waiver show tomorrow. Lots of juicy names. Yep. I wonder uh, wonder who we're going to talk about. It's such a mystery. 
Catch you tomorrow, everybody. Enjoy the game tonight. Stay safe. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.